Niall, let's what? talk about... <laughs> just You're let starting me... starting so aggressively. <laughs> let me say your name, and then let me ask you something. Is that allowed? Yeah, go for it. Okay, Niall. What? Let's talk about phones. Okay. So, we all have phones, right? I, you and I both do, for sure. And I'm you pretty and sure that do Jared sure. does, who is not here this week, by who the way. Who is not here. Yes, shout out to Jared. <laughs> shout We're out to address Jared. it earlier on this week. Sorry about taking a half hour last week, Jared. You know we love you. But, yeah, he's still in Europe, so... And happy Europe. birthday. I think this is his birthday episode. So, it'll yes. come out on the 19th, which is Jared's birthday. So, happy birthday, Jared. I guess we could have done that for, like, an opening bit, but... Yeah, um, well, too late. Whatever. You came up with something else. <laughs> I came up with the beginning of an idea. But here we are. You know, we have our phones, right? Jared has a phone. He's probably listening on his phone. Niall oh, and I have phones. Niall and I's phones are a little bit cooler because they're the purple iPhone. But, you know, I digress. Right. One thing I like about my phone are the apps, you know? Oh, yeah. I have so much stuff on my phone. Music, apps, games, obviously. A medieval game, obviously. A jousting game, obviously. obviously. I have no problem being on my phone for hours and hours. And I love my phone. I even have an alarm on my phone to make sure that I charge it. But this week's episode is brought to you by everyone's favorite medieval jousting game, Jousting Medieval Time Magic. And oh, it's a good. new app. It's a new app developed by Netflix. You can get it on the Netflix app or just on the App Store. It's usually $1,000, but if you're subscribed to Netflix... They let you rent it for one hour for free to try it out. Now, it's wow. my personal favorite jousting app because it allows you to, kind of like an Ender's game, put yourself in the seat of a real-life jouster and kill right. real-life people without <laughs> actually having to do the killing because it's the person there who's doing the killing. Right. So, oh, so you're like tapping into the actual mind of a jouster. Exactly. In okay. modern day. Now, there's Spoilers not a for lot Ender's of... game, by the way. Spoilers for Ender's Game, <laughs> if I guess. you haven't read it. <laughs> or seen it. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Harrison Ford. And, and so, Asa Butterfield. Yeah, and him. Less of a shout out to him, though. More yeah, I don't know. Harrison Ford. Sorry, I'll Haley stop Steinfeld. talking. Orson Scott Card. Let's just shout out everyone involved with that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. No, we're not it? sponsored by, I don't know, someone J.J. Abrams, sure. probably. No, there's no way. I know, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, but this jousting game, right? Okay, so you get to put yourself in the mind of a real-life jouster, literally. It's kind of like being John Malkovich as well, if you've ever seen that, where you I become haven't, that person. I feel like spoilers, maybe. So. Not not really. I mean, it's in the name, <laughs> being John Malkovich. Go for you it. You get to be John Malkovich, right? But this sure. time, you get to be medieval jouster in medieval jouster 3D <laughs> online game. Right. Which is the new title. They just renamed it. Just barely, <laughs> wow. I just barely got an email that they renamed it. Medieval Jouster. You're on the mailing list. Game. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm always up to date on these jousting. And so what I have done and what you can do is get it through the Netflix app. And then if you use cave ma- or code Man Cave Movie Night, mm. they'll let you do two jousters at the same time. You can do the person on each end. So you can fight yourself. It's kind of crazy when you think Mm -hmm. about it. Each eye becomes a different person. And then you kind of kill yourself while killing someone else. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of a reverse Pacific Rim where rather than having two people to control one thing, you have one person to control two things. Exactly. But that's (laughs) an exclusive offer for Man Cave Movie Night. Man Cave Movie Night. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, get this app. It's on the App Store for $1,000 or you get a free one hour subscription trial. Mm-hmm. If, with your Netflix account, that's a Medieval Jouster 3D online game. I actually also just got an email um, that says that if you use the code Man Cave Movie Night, you unlock a new uh, game mode, uh, which is just the one-way jousting, um, oh. where where you just play as a jouster and there's just a person standing there to be jousted against, but has no means of of defense. Of defense, and yeah. they can't run. Either they can't run, they're they're not they're uh, yeah strapped in, and uh, so you just skewer the man. So you just skewer the man. However, the the two player I guess also extends to that, so you can play the man jousting and the man being jousted. Um, that's against pretty his interesting. Will. So yeah, I'm kind sure. Of, I'm sure just, that's a really cool. Yeah, it helps you explore game. you know the atrocities of man um, while also you know getting to kill a real life person so 
but without the but without the weight you, on but, your consciousness. But it's not you. You're not the one. Doing <laughs> yeah, it's someone else. It. It's, so some, it's okay. someone else. Exactly. So thank you very much for sponsoring this week. Let's What's the name of the game again? Uh, it's a medieval jousting 3D online game. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Welcome back to Man Cave Movie Night. My name is Lucas. And my name is Niall. And, and my this name is Jared. week. And, and Jared is here hey, after Jared. all. Oh, hey, Jared. Thanks What's for uh, being here. Thanks yeah. for logging in from um, Ireland or wherever yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm Somewhere really cool. happy to be here. This is what I've always sounded like. <laughs> and looked like. You yeah. You and Niall are now sharing consciousness. and Exactly. Form. He's jousting through me. He's jousting through you. That's why you have glasses on this week. Exactly. Because that's how you're able to. Because Jared needs to be Jared. able to see. Okay, I see, I see. Jared that's has great. glasses, so. Yeah, Okay. I was thinking more of like a VR thing, but it's simply because he's inhabiting it's your brain. Because he needs and to so be able you to need... see. Okay, exactly. Okay. You both need to. Okay, yeah, these cool. are prescription glasses. It's making me very difficult for me to see as a man with perfect vision. But, you know, that's okay. I Fun fact, I also have perfect vision. Isn't that so cool about you and I, Niall? It's very we cool. we both have perfect vision. I hate Everyone... you guys. <laughs> it, it... Sorry, Jared. But if you're listening and you also have perfect vision, just go ahead and raise your hand. We'd love to see out yep. there. And we'll count them. I'll count them throughout. Okay, just keep them, them keep them lifted until the end of the episode just to make sure that I get you counted, and then I'll, I'll tally it off at the end. So Cool. That's perfect. But this week we're talking about I Think You Should Leave Season 3, which came out a couple weeks ago. We did a couple other episodes in between just because, I don't know, partly to let people watch it, maybe even to let you know that it's out. Maybe you didn't even know it was out. So this is your, you know, the... Uh, if you've been looking for a sign Words. to watch, I think you, you should yeah, leave exactly. season three. This is it. This is it. Exactly. This is your uh, call to arms to go watch it. And because if you haven't, I, there's not really a way to do this without like spoilers, I guess. It's not really. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, it's, it's just. You, we're going to talk like, about it. Yep. It's a sketch watch show. It, like if you care about not knowing what the sketches are before you go in, which totally reasonable thing to care about. Yeah. Go and watch it. It's like an hour long to watch the whole thing. And then. Mm-hmm. Pop back then, in here and listen to us probably just quote it the whole time. Yeah, quote it and <laughs> so. just talk about how good and interesting it is. So we watched this a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, we did not watch it together. We it were going shame. to. It was a scheduling then, nightmare on my end, and I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Niall's fault. It's always Niall's fault. It's usually like Niall's fault. I'll mm. say. Shut up, Jared. Yeah, shut up, Jared. What do you know? But we've seen it, we love it, and we're just going to talk about it because, I mean, Niall and I are also, if you're watching, are both wearing I Think You Should Leave shirts from season yep. two. Because yeah. I don't. I'm wearing a Coffin Flop a TV shirt. One. I'm wearing a Gimme That I'm Joking shirt. <laughs> and so, yeah, season three. Let's just get into it. I'm just going to start by reading off the episodes. Wait, and wait, wait. What all the sketches are. Can we go with general thoughts of the season first? Yes. Just a classic overall thoughts. Before we talk about what they all are, or do you want to... I think just before we talk about what they okay, all are. Cool. Just like just like a brief, how does this season stack up with the other seasons? Yeah, okay. And if you're still listening and you haven't watched it, you could probably listen to this before yeah. we get into... Yeah. I, yeah. I personally think that of the three seasons, this is probably my least favorite overall. Interesting. However... I think it contains, as individual sketches, some of my favorite sketches that have ever been on the show. You know? Interesting. I, yeah. I think the highs are really high, and the lows are really low in this season. Very interesting. So, that's, I, that's my general review. I this, this season felt like they really kind of came into a good rhythm. Like, they really knew what they were doing with every single sketch and every single mm. episode. Um, it seemed like a lot more... Not that there's a lot of like congruency between it all. It's, sure. You know, a crazy random sketch show. But it felt like they were really they really understood. I, I like this one more than two, I think, overall. Mm. But I mean I love all three seasons so much. Sure. Me and too. so seeing this one really just was like, man, this is a... Uh... there there are a couple that are not as good, but there are a yeah. lot that are just really heavy hitters. Yeah. And um I loved it. I loved the whole thing. All six episodes, all, you know, however many sketches Nope. Pretty much were awesome. And so yeah. a lot I of really... celebrity cameos in this one too. Yeah, surprising ones too. <laughs> They're cranking that I, cranking I think that for the most part 
did great. Um, yeah. Not a ton of repeats except for Tim Heidecker. I think that's the only like celebrity really that yeah. came back who's not like a main part of the cast. Right. Um, but His yeah, sketch I, was great. It was. I'm really <laughs> hoping that they get a season four. It seems like they will. This show has yeah. really blown up between two and three. Yeah. But it's interesting. They, I, I wonder if they'll take two years again because season one was 2019, season two was 2021, and now season three is 2023. I think that right. it probably will be two years before the next season, which is fine because we have all this time to rewatch seasons one through three. Could be. However, I feel like the general stoke is up for the show and yeah. now not deal. Well, I guess, but they've got like Writers Guild stuff that yeah. they're probably so dealing with now. Yep. I was, I was going to say now that they don't have like covid in the way or anything like yeah. that they can probably just get on it but with writers guild stuff i think you're probably right probably about two years probably two summers from now which is kind of how it's been and you know what honestly i would totally love more fine. but so be it if we get another season which it seems likely netflix is very hit or miss with whether or not they renew stuff though yeah i would love it i would be more than enthused if he just kept doing this for the rest of his life because it seems <laughs> like this is his favorite thing he's ever done <laughs> yeah for I good agree. reason because it's just totally his own thing yeah um but yeah, this is kind of the list. It's interesting. Netflix has like an official list on their website of the ep ne episode names and the sketch names. So I'm just oh, gonna list they've them got off. names of the sketches even. Yep, exactly. Interesting. Okay. So we got episode one. That was the Earth telling me I'm supposed to be doing something great. And the sketches, <laughs> <laughs> the sketches are just barley that tonight. Line. I know it's so good. All the episode names are hilarious. <laughs> um, and then Mortal Enemies, Summer Lovin'. Dad video and then designated driver. They average like four or five typically every episode. And then episode two is I can do whatever I want. First, uh, the first <laughs> sketch is supermarket swap. Then Darmine doggy door, which may be my favorite one in this season. <laughs> I I knew you would love that one right when I saw it. <laughs> it's like um, Lucas is probably losing his mind right now, dude. That one just obliterated me. We, oh, dude, it's just the best possible reveal it's just like a very like weird you know whatever and yeah. kind of like even primacin but it's just like yeah and the doggy door keeps out you know intruders or other animals or whatever or the hell this, this is thing. <laughs> it's just this disgusting monster that crawls through so funny oh um, yeah and great. then we have ponytail eggman game and sitcom taping Eggman uh, game is going to be <laughs> historical, is a I think. Eggman all-timer, dude. That one was so good. <laughs> I, I was also thinking about you in that one. I was like, oh, this oh, has dude, to do with egg. eggs. I'm sure that Lucas <laughs> loves just this. eating it up. Oh, man. Feed then episode egg. three, you feed egg. Have you, you been you like to the to website, buy... by the way? Oh, yeah, it's real. Because you can play uh, the game, yeah. You can, yeah. It's awesome. Um, and then we have cut to, we're chatting about this at your bachelor party, which is the name of episode three. Right. Which has silent show. First date, ABX heart monitor, drive through, and Robert's Christmas birthday. Mm, those are good ones. Very good ones as well. Um, and then episode four, which is so now every time I'm about to do something I really want to do, I ask myself, wait a minute, what is this? And those <laughs> the have, name of the episode. That's the name of the Jeez. episode. The episodes are just huge sentences. <laughs> um, Jenna's bad day, Pacific proposal park, Jelly uh summer love and farewell package, and children's choir. Then episode Jail five Utah was a good one. Dude, that was a good one. Again, very like Prilison esque. Yeah. Um, episode five only has three sketches, which is uh, the name of it is "Don't Just Say Relax, Actually Relax." It's bloody eyeball, which is the one where he I don't know why. Oh, I, he, it's the one where he imagines things are not actually what they are. Yes. Which I think has which has one of my favorite quotes from this season, which is. Don't say anything he says is interesting and good. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a very good one. <laughs> um, and then Photo Booth, another one which I loved. And then Talk About My Kids, which I think is another one of my favorites. And then Episode 6. Yeah, that's a great one. The one where uh, the title of the last episode is, When I first thought of this, you didn't even have hands up there. You were just walking straight up the wall. <laughs> In reference to the metal man. Right. Um, <laughs> The ones in that one are Banana Breath, Metal Motto Search, Don, Don Bondardly. Oh, yeah, that's the one with the guy who comes in and starts singing dirty, lewd songs. Yeah. And then Tasty Time Vids, which was another one that I was very into. Yeah. 
So you that's know, the season. There's a lot of good ones in, in there. One. There's a lot of good ones in there. Um, let's just start off by, you know, talking about some of our favorites. We kind of referenced them, but Niall, what was like the one that you think overall will stick with you and like your favorite? Okay. Um, for me, it is a, it's a three-way tie. Nice. And I think that this is going to be a common three-way tie for a lot of viewers. Um, three-way tie between Summer Loving, the oh. one of the the kind of Bachelorette style show. He, oh, dude, my favorite one. He just that wants one. to go on the <laughs> sip. <simple. laughs> hey, how's your relationship going with Megan? Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Slamming the water. Because all of us have done that, you know, in one yeah. way or another. <laughs> He just oh. and then he's getting cut and he wants so badly to just keep just going say, on the zip line. I love you and then he breaks out his dumb smile that he always does. It's just She's and, like I'm sorry. And he's like, Oh are that, you sure? Okay, and that's another thing that I want to talk about. That um I I Okay, I'm just going to go through it. I have a friend who does that exact face and sound. The, ah, uh, with his little side yeah, mouth like, thing that he does and his little, like, growling at people. I have a friend who does that so exactly that I'm shocked that, like, he's not copying this show. Yeah, because of yeah. how much exactly the same it is. And so I was already just like cringing and uncomfortable from the whole sequence. But then when he started doing that, I really did kind of lose my broke mind. Down. So, and it, it also features some of my favorite classic uh, Tim Robinson stuff, which is just like not having an explanation for things. <laughs> like when he's like, there's something really bad for me at home. She's like, what is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's just, that is a funnier answer than having any actual thing. So He also has that guy, the Mike from Adventure 365. Yeah. He keeps repeating he's, himself up, in Mike. slightly different wording. He's like, he pulls on the rope. He tugs on it. He's too hard on the rope. He just pulls on the rope. He won't stop pulling on the rope. He's like, shut yeah. up, Mike. Shut super, up, Mike. Super, like, just like signature Tim Robinson writing, <laughs> like, you know, it's like he is telling him to shut up as though he's already been talking to him more than once. <laughs> like it's just an established yeah. relationship between these two. Um, so it's a tie between that and then two sketches, which come from the same episode, uh, season three, um, silent show with Richard Brecky. Um, his, the, you know, that one, the, which one was that one? It's the one where he's trying to be a mime and oh, you get paid yeah. if he oh, talks. Of course, of course. <laughs> I I was just dying. There's a line in there that I've shown a couple of people and none of them think it's as funny as I did. But when he's like, when you, if you would have asked me when I started this, how many frats would come, I would have said none. <laughs> and now it's like all frats. <laughs> I don't know what it was about that line, but it just killed me. And I, yeah, so that one really that landed great. for I, me. I love that one. And then um, Drive Through, oh. the, the Pay It Forward thing. Dude, that Which I'm already so seeing good. people just reposting as oh, Instagram yeah. reels yep. the entire sketch and just, yep. not, and just no credit recording. anywhere. Dude, this is why I hate, I just, this is a sidetrack. Mm -hmm. This could be maybe the topic of a post-credits episode. But the whole TikTok and Reels culture of just, really oh, I sucks. found this thing, and so now it's mine. Yeah. It, as long as I post it, just drives me crazy. Me too. Ugh, I really hate that. So Which is mad. And it, what it does is it forces the companies to, or the shows, to make their own accounts and then edit and post them. Which yeah. is what Nathan For You has done. Even though that show has been over for, you know, years, yeah. like six years now, they are have a huge TikTok and Instagram presence because they're like, we need to get ahead of this because if we don't do it, someone else for sure will. Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of fun to see them do that, but it's also kind of annoying that they like have to do that because obviously the whole show, just episodes of it is the best way to watch it. It's yeah. just like diluted down YouTube clips of the show, which is kind of the worst way to consume yeah. like comedy. 
Um, but you know, it is what it is. It's better than having no publicity for it. And I think TikTok and Instagram have helped. I think you should leave a lot, even though there's oh, no actual time. credit. A lot of times going well, there to them, some. There's, it helps There's this them. page called I Think You Should Reel yeah. that and I started following yeah. when there was like 300 followers or something. And it, it's like, huge they, they put me on my on their story for just going through and liking all of the things. They were like, <laughs> thanks, man. And now it's like a huge oh, <laughs> Instagram yeah, it's a massive page. page. And it's like you can you can do and I like I'm okay with them doing that because they're they're given the credit. It's like yeah. this is I think you should leave. It's the not thing, just like oh the, here are funny sketches that I can steal and post. You know. Yeah, yeah, which is dumb. <laughs> the thing with them though is they are posting edited versions of the uh, right. sketches, which I've watched, and it's like they cut out timing stuff and jokes, and I'm like, yeah. what is this like monstrosity? Yeah. They just like kind of they only focus on the main beats, and it's like. That's not the yeah, point like, of this. No, like you have there's to... all of this space that is integral to the joke actually landing. Yep. Well, those <laughs> are some excellent, uh, excellent yeah. choices. I think obviously the Darmine Doggy Door. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a top three as well. Dar- <laughs> Darmine Doggy Door, just amazing. And Eggman Game, just those yeah. two, same episode, yeah, amazing. I saw that coming for sure, <sighs> man. And then I'm gonna do a top four because. Then the ABX heart monitor, I loved as well. So funny. And then uh, the fourth one is Talk About My Kids. I really, really loved that one. Yeah, the Talk About My Kids had some of the lines that had me laughing the hardest. Just him talking to his, like, groupies that his are following groupies, him yeah. He's like, I've become way too popular at this party. <laughs> I have way too many friends. Well, and, and that's, <laughs> what I love about the show is just... You never know how people are going to be reacting in mm-hmm. like the the side characters. Yep. You never yep. know if they're gonna be normal side characters or if they're gonna be weird or if his actions are gonna be super off putting or if people are gonna love it. Like, by like in that it. one, there there's an alternate version of that sketch, I'm sure, where he's doing dumb stuff at a party and everybody hates him for yep. it. Yep. Exactly. But, but, but it works. It, they it's... decided to have him do dumb stuff at a party, and people love it. When he starts <laughs> just... just doing the little sidestep dance, and people and like everyone get in joins a behind huge him. Huge crowd. It's so funny, and it's just like, for example, with the hot dog sketch uh, uh-huh. from from season one, the hot dog car sketch. Yeah. Just the subverting the expectations by having. The one guy in the crowd that agrees that they need to spank whoever did this. And he's like, well, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, he's so good at that. Anyway, yep. sorry. Not no, to, I, not I, to I totally agree over. because that's what this sketch does really well, which the, um, there was another, the sitcom taping one does as well, where sometimes they'll buy in to what he's doing. Like the sloppy yeah. mud pie one in season one as well. Yeah. Same thing where everyone is just on board with the thing he does. Yeah. And I think the, Funny thing that this season really was able to do more so than in previous the previous two seasons was his first appearance, Tim Robinson, is a joke. And they'll just cut to him sitting or staring or whatever, and mm-hmm. it got me and like the friends I was watching to laugh. Because you yeah. know some sort He's of chicanery is about to start. <laughs> yeah. Like something's going to start up and... In sitcom particular. is a great uh, example of that. Where yeah, exactly. You just where... see that he's in the crowd and you're already like, oh no. <laughs> I don't know what it's going <laughs> to exactly. be, but it's going to be bad. The other one is when it's like the the office training or whatever. And he is like, yeah, let's say Rick and Stan are mortal enemies and they yep. hate each other. And you just see him and he like nods and then he looks over at the guy and you're like, oh man, yeah. what is this <laughs> going to be? You, you just know, know. it's going to be this whole thing. And then of course... Still, it ends up with something happening that you're not expecting. That yeah. Other oh, yeah. dude comes in, and then he gets mad at himself. He's like, I just take things way too far. <laughs> also leading to one of my favorite, the obligatory Tim Robinson speaking English just poorly. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, like, yeah. Like speaking faster than he can actually form the thought when he says to the guy at the end, and now you're in way more in trouble than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're in more in trouble than I am. I just love that. <laughs> he does it all I the love time. It too. It's my or the 
the for 50 seconds i thought there uh, that were there monsters were monsters on the, the world. world and they <laughs> and they subtitled it <laughs> for no reason it's so funny dude i love that dude oh. that's in the that's in the um the doggy door at the the doggy door sketch and yeah that that just a what a great way to end that sketch with just for 50 seconds i thought there were monsters on the world and it's subtitles yeah monsters it's, on the world it's, it's just great. such a funny joke but with the the kids one um yeah i thought it was so funny jason schwartzman was in this that was yeah. like so unexpected and he nailed it he was oh so yeah funny. he was so good and then tim meadows as well in the photo booth one yeah tim where meadows he puts the crushed it feather down his throat he's like that's what three seconds isn't enough time to think of something silly and yeah. that that one also has an example of him saying something and then repeating it right after, which happens all <laughs> yeah. the time in this, where he's like, yeah, the the cloth is his fur, the fur is his hair, or whatever it is that he says, and he just keeps saying that. He's like, look, I'm like Barney. It's like I have my hair. And it's just such a <laughs> weird joke that he gets like obsessed with, like Barney's costume is his hair. <laughs> yeah. like, what is happening? It's so funny. And then, yeah, they move on, and he brings it back to it. It's yeah, like, yeah. no, cloth is just small hair. Small hair, yeah, that's what it is. Oh, so man. funny, dude. Okay. I, uh, oh, yeah, keep going. Well, no, I was just going to say, you kind of brought this up a little bit. I'm going to pivot from the one of my favorites to the one that was just way too real. That I was like, man, mm. this is just like, this happens in real life. And it's the worst thing ever. And is he just nails owl? it. No, but that one is great. Because <laughs> that's the one that made me like, I could barely stay sitting because of how uncomfortable I was the first so, time watching it. That's what I was going to say. What, what's the one for you that was like the most, you go first since you're already talking about it and then I'll yeah. talk about the one I, but yeah. So, so bloody, bloody eyeball. eyeball. The, the premise of the sketch is he says <sighs> kind of yeah. this dumb thing where he's, I can't even remember how it starts. Well, it starts with him saying, oh, I thought it was a volcano. Oh, I thought it was a volcano. So there was a loud noise, and everybody's like, oh, I thought a truck backed up into the building. I thought this. And he says, I thought it was a volcano. And this dude at the table kind of gets, like, unnecessarily upset with him for that. And he's like, yes, I did think that it was a volcano. And then there's just an awkward silence. But there's a one girl that, like... Kinda. Kind of, kind of doesn't even sponsor him in this joke. He's just like, I'd like to live inside of this guy's head. And then he latches onto this girl and just starts saying that he thinks things are other things. And I just have been in situations like that so many times where somebody who's not funny says one thing that like maybe lands and then they just drive it into the ground oh, dude, and it's, it's immediately so, uncomfortable oh, on yeah. the second oh, attempt, yeah. you know, he does. And he's he, so he captured it perfectly. He's so self-aware. Like he's yeah. so aware of social, just like, Oh man, what's even the word for it? Just inexcusable social behavior. And he's just able to tap into that so well and create these uncomfortable environments that people either buy into or just reject completely. Yeah. And yeah, that one was so good. That has that quote with don't say anything he says is good or interesting or good or whatever the <laughs> exact, I don't remember the exact quote, but I just remember the boss getting mad at the other lady. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that was her reasoning that just killed and me. It's another example of just proving that Tim Robinson has probably spent a lot of time working in like office jobs. Oh man. Cause he's, oh, yeah. yeah, it's like this so kind many of office like, sketches. Okay. Our, our office is under construction. So thanks for sharing the space for a little while. Like that's just a thing that happens, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like he, there, there are three he loves the office, like sketches. staples of Tim Robinson sketches. One of them, obviously the office scenario like conference room type scenario yep. and then like a party like a dinner party or whatever yep. just some sort of a house gathering and then fake ads and yeah not all of them are that but those three it's... scenarios <laughs> are just all there's over the place there's at least two an episode almost <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like... it's like two of the three yeah oh no yeah. and then in the whole season each season there's so many yeah and so the one that was the most painfully relatable for me was tasty time vids which is the very last oh, sketch yeah. in the whole season shout and out to connor o'malley and connor one. o'malley hilarious love i love having him come back because he's just so funny and this just reminded me of this kid i was on drumline with last year in just the worst ways <laughs> because 
you know, he has a YouTube channel or whatever. And like, I always, it's always fun to say like, Hey dude, like good for you for doing what you like, whatever. And I was just like, Hey man, I watched one of your videos. It was really funny. Like, cool. And he was oh, like, Oh, geez. thanks. And then every time I saw him after that, he's like, Hey, I just uploaded another video. Have you watched it yet? And I was just oh. always like, Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> and he just always was hammering home like, Oh yeah, man. You know, texting me his videos or whatever. And it was just in a very similar vein and he would he he just thought we were way closer than we actually were, and yeah. it was just uncomfortable. And Ugh, that sucks. So and watching that, that, this yeah. was just like so perfectly. I mean, obviously it's a heightened version of it, but it so perfectly encapsulates just that type of person. And Connor Malley was perfect for it as well. In this episode as well, Tim Robinson is the straight man, which is very yep. funny when he does that. Love it when he does that. It's not common, but when it does happen, it's it's great. <laughs> that is that's a good sketch too dude there's a lot of good ones in there. now that i'm kind of looking back at the list i'm like yeah there's there's a lot of good in here i uh, um, have you what have you rewatched it at all i've rewatched it a couple of times yeah yeah <laughs> i don't have much to do yeah it's <laughs> so. so good um so what were some of the ones you didn't like as much i'm yeah curious. i wanted to i wanted to go through and talk about some stinkers Interesting. so uh let's just start um, at the beginning, first of all, dad video with Fred, Fred Armisen. Yeah. I think that's, the it worst just, one. it just didn't land. Yeah. I, I think there are moments that is funny where at the end he's like, Hey, sorry, we were putting stuff on your Marvel coffee table. Yeah. Like Marvel the marble table, tab. the marble counter. It was funny just yep. because it's like, okay, there's just hyper there's specific something details. there. Yeah, yeah. The, the hyper specificity is always funny, but overall it just seemed like good premise but it's funnier as a premise in a conversation rather than actually an executed sketch. I agree. You know, I agree. I, that felt um, like Fred Armisen wanted to be in a sketch, but his schedule was like hard to deal with because yeah. he was not in the same room as those kids. Like he was very clearly oh, you shot think? independently, and then the you know whole street thing was just a. It was probably all done in one day because he had a tight yeah. schedule or whatever. It was still fun to see him in it. I hope he comes back because I think Fred Armisen is hilarious. Portlandia is hilarious, which is another sketch show that he did for years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that one kind of was a miss. Um, another one, I'm just going to kind of go through and list all of the stinkers Interesting. for me. I'm very curious. Um, so I think that supermarket swap is really funny. The one with him in the VR, in the VR thing where yeah. he forgets how to breathe. I, I thought that, I thought that the, it was really funny. The ending of it really annoyed me. Really? What about of just the, like the, the face switch face? thing where I'm just like, <laughs> don't try to be Tim and Eric, you know, do your own thing. And it's this just like, that's so Tim and Eric though. I mean, yeah. obviously it's very different from Tim and Eric in that it has an actual budget and production value. Yeah. But there's a lot of Tim and Eric influence on this. Well, there's, yeah, there's I mean, a lot Tim of Tim and Eric literally influence, in, yeah. but it, it just kind of like, they haven't done that like Tim and Eric, Eric Andre type editing before. And it just felt too jarring and kind of like, like it didn't make me laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was just kind of like, Oh, weird and wacky, but it like, it wasn't funny to me just because it felt out of place. Well, they do, they do kind of stuff like that. Sometimes I don't remember specifically with seasons one and two, but where they'll like freeze frame at the end and then have like a sound effect. Yeah. Like, like in the bones are their money one. Yeah, exactly. Just does horns on his face at the end. Exactly. Exactly. And in this one with the drunk, like the driving crooner, it driving ends crooner, which is so with good. him just saying, wow, like it pauses yeah. on the face like that. They do kind of stuff like that. I agree that this was a little bit maybe it was it was a little place, farther but... than I would have wanted. And yeah. that's fine. Like that yeah. happens sometimes. I was um, fine with it, but <laughs> uh, first date I thought was funny. I'm just I said that out loud and I didn't mean to uh, Robert's Christmas oh, yeah. birthday. I've too always, long. I just want a second. I just want a second girlfriend. She's like, yeah, you already have was... a girlfriend? He's like, yeah, but I want to have two. <laughs> just want that to is two. such it's, a funny it's joke. A, it's a great twist. I love that one. I love that so much. Um, Robert's Christmas birthday just felt too long and not I agree funny it was enough. too long, yeah. I, I, I think the ending with someone drinking the poo was just like, or eating the poo or whatever. You just like, saw it coming. You, you knew know? it was going to happen. It was like, yeah. it, it, it was funny, but it was like a little bit too on the nose, I feel like. Yeah. But it was. I really like. I the rat I honestly thought it. it would have been funnier if 
you just saw the hand take the cup and then there was didn't no hear anything I after agree. that. Yeah, that would have been really funnier. Um, but okay. I, I did like the rat mom. Her yeah, the, explanation the rat, and then like her justification of all that. The rat really mom funny. thing, but like that conversation was funny and it did not need all of the, like, and even like Patty Harrison's performance of like dumping all of the shots onto On the cardboard the guy, cutout. Yeah. Like it was funny. She yeah. did a good job. It just think, wasn't, it just wasn't, you know, a winner sketch for me. Yeah. Um. It, so aside with her and some of the other characters in this. I was kind of looking through IMDb and stuff, and a lot of the characters in this are also writers or directors of it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Tim Robinson, um, Patty Harrison writes a lot on this show. Yeah. Um, The guy in season two, I don't think he's in this season, but with the sketch where he, like, has too much stuff on him, I don't want to be around anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy on the other end of the the mic. Yeah, the guy in the chair. Yeah, he's in a couple of things in season one, too. Yeah, yep. And then the guy in the driving crooner who calls Tim Robinson directs a lot of these episodes. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, and so there's like a lot of, and then Zach Kanan, the co-creator and um, yeah, writer, he's in a, he's only he's in, in a bunch of them. He's only in one this season. I'm pretty sure though. Oh I think yeah. He's only in because he says he doesn't like acting as much. He's in the Don Bondarley one at the very yeah. end of the last episode. Like he's just one of the friends. Which, I think he's that's really funny. Another, that's another stinker, by the way. Yeah, the I didn't one. love that one. I it, thought the it almost feels there were a couple m- great lines in that one. Yeah, um, with him, the dude's performance just isn't get, like it. It seems like someone that's acting like they're forgetting stuff. Another thing that I want to talk about real quick. There's kind of some secret goodies that I want to cover. Ooh, um, secret goodies. Like you know, what? You know that I love some secret goodies. Uh, I love I love when you discover my secret goodies. So, uh, first of all, um, in the Metalloid Man sketch, um, they so there's like the little animated section, right? Uh-huh. The little voices. I didn't find this until the second time through. This honestly isn't that cool of a thing. <laughs> it's <laughs> but, pretty cool. I mean, it's fun. Yeah, but it's. Um, I just think that it was. It made the sketch so much better for me the second time, already kind of knowing what the whole point of the thing was. But um, the in the animation, all of the voices are done by Sam Richardson, which just kind of further drives home that point. Of like, of like, this, this is, is just thing. one guy that just really wants this thing to take and he off. He loves it so much. I, I just love that interaction of just the you can have whatever story you want. Like he keeps like trying to hammer it home with this guy, and the guy's like, "Dude, I don't like. It doesn't matter. Like oh. I can't physically do these it's things so that you funny. want me to do. The wall is your ground. The just, wall, yeah. Just imagine like." The wall is your ground. That's just how I pictured it. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you can have whatever story you want. What a great line. <laughs> I know. Oh, so that funny. interaction is so good. Um, another secret little goodie. This is much less secret, but also just further speaking to why Summer Lovin is one of my favorites, and it just gets uh, better every time you watch it. But in, like, the little intro sequence, I don't think there's even a single shot that doesn't have him on the zip line dropping into the pool. Like, even just in the background, but, like, this, this, yeah, like, it's just constantly he's, going. he's in every single shot. Like they set that joke up so well to the point that you don't even really notice it until you watch it again. <laughs> uh-huh. And then you just see him doing it at the beginning of the minute. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, oh. Dude, that that's sketch all he just wants gets to do. funnier every time you watch it. I just, oh, I love that interaction with Mike so much. Like, shut up, Mike. <laughs> he pulls on the rope. He tugs on the shut rope. Shut up, Mike. I said shut up, rope. Mike. <laughs> the, I said so shut funny. up, Mike, dude. Honestly, Tim it's Robinson. Like clearly they have a history. And... That award that he got. For the best Emmy for, for best, best actor actor in a like <laughs> in a sketch or well deserved. I wasn't oh, yeah. like I had thought that it was kind of funny just because he's such a weird looking dude and mm-hmm. the writing is definitely what I think kind of takes the cake. But yeah, it's the strongest part. Of it, I but. when I pay attention to him acting, it really is like no, that is that is good. Like even in oh, the yeah. in the um. The first one that I go on my phone one, I can't remember what it's called, oh, dude. The, but when the he Bartley, does the whatever. yeah, 
when he does the, um, I go in for the kill, and he does like the stab thing, but he winds his arm all the way around. It's and so his faces funny, and his, dude. His little voices are like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where he just does that with his voice is just so funny. Uh, he's... I have no problem being on my phone the whole time. <laughs> it's just so dumb. Like I put all the stuff on my computer onto the new phone. I love yeah. I love how aggressive he is, and as he starts explaining the process of backing up a phone and loading up the new one, he kind of just, like, cools off a little bit, and yeah. he's just like, okay, now I'm just explaining how backing up a the, phone works. There's a lot of nodding jokes in this season, too, where he plugs the phone, and it's at 99%, he plugs in it, and he's just nodding, like, really aggressively, <laughs> yeah. and then in the Jason Schwartzman one, the, the talking about my kids one, um... He's like, there's like a dancing sequence right after that. And he's like right over this lady's shoulder. And he's just like <laughs> dancing really aggressively, like just with his head and neck. Uh, dude, it's so he's funny. so good. He's so good. Okay. Another secret goodie though. Um, in the shirt buddies one, the children's choir one that has uh, Biff Whiff, a uh, returning veteran oh, yeah, from season two from Crashmore. Um, everyone's favorite first of all the the shirt buddies thing i like as Dude, soon as that was that established i know i want that shirt <laughs> and as soon it. as the shirt buddies thing was established i was like okay so this is gonna be weird but i don't know how and it did not take the turn that i was expecting it no. went oh. a totally different direction. i need you to promise me to never do another rule promise me a million times you'll never do another rule it's like, oh, I can't rule. promise that. <laughs> it's just, it's so good. But the song that is inspiring um, the elder shirt brother to uh, uh, start breaking rules or not follow the rules. I guess that there are no rules. <laughs> um, <laughs> that the, it tells him that there are no rules. Yeah, the that first, is his first realization. That is by a band called Turnstile. Um, which I don't know if you're aware of them, but they're kind of like a, a pretty big deal in the like rock. I have not heard much. I mean, it kind of sounded somewhat familiar, but I don't know yeah. that I've listened uh, to There's, a there's an album from, I think, 2019, maybe 2020, called Glow On. It might even be later. It might be 2021. I don't know. I don't keep track. But in that, that album, Glow On, is like one of the better albums. It's so much fun. Um but yeah, this song is just by them. They shadow dropped it the day that the series or that the season was a single or an album. It's a single, the... I think. And I think it's like, you can, I don't know if it's on Apple music, but it is on Spotify. I'm almost certain. Or um, SoundCloud probably if it's not on either yeah, of those. Something like that. But yeah, turnstile did this. I know that there are some other musicians that did certain songs that I, I'm less familiar with the musicians, but Musician, there was someone that did the song that's at the end of the, um, the sitcom filming, the sitcom taping one. Oh, um, nice. There's like kind of a song over, uh, the kind of montage of showing the date actually going down. And it's, it's some musician that did that too. That's also kind of a, a name, not one that I'm familiar with, but it almost makes me feel like knowing turnstile that it's like these guys almost maybe reached out to Tim Robinson and yeah. not the other way around. <laughs> like they were just like, Hey, we like the show and we want to be a part of it somehow, you know? And like with how much music cues that this show has, it's, it's not oh, unlikely, yeah. you know, they, they probably in, were thinking like, yeah, we could get in there somehow. Um, in the talk about my kids one as well. Like every yeah. time Tim Rob, like every time he says uh, Jason Schwartzman mentions his kids or anything, there's like that piano note, and then it cuts to Tim Robinson <laughs> yeah, as he like dude. looks over at him. Oh, it's so and it, good. Because it'll be like somewhat awkward situations where the yeah. people he's talking to is like, "Oh, did you go alone?" And he's just like looking around. He's like, "No, I uh, I went with my kid." Oh, and my like, daughter <laughs> looks over at him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, it almost this this is gonna maybe sound like a weird comparison to make, but it almost feels like like Wes Anderson and how everybody wants, like, I, I feel like everybody wants to be in a Wes Anderson movie. We're talking actors, not just people. And with how many well, people, people there are, well, yeah, but like with how huge the list of like true A-listers is in any given Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. Oh, it's almost insane. certain that the budget 
to pay the actors as lower. Like they're not, oh, yeah, for sure. they're not in those movies for the money. That's that's Scarlett like, Johansson is not getting her Black Widow stipend. Yeah, it, there's <laughs> no Asperance way. City. And it's like it's like that's that's their one for me, you know, with like the studio yep. one for them, one for me. That's like when they do a Wes Anderson one, they're just doing it because it's a project they want to be a part of. And I low key feel like that's the same thing with I think you should leave oh, and all sure. of these guest stars that they have, especially with with so many of them being SNL related. We've got Fred uh, Armisen, um, Will Forte, uh, Tim Meadows, Tim Meadows, <laughs> who, yep. who he's great in that one. But it's it feels almost like oh, I, and I there's don't... also another the Kyle Mooney, not Kyle Mooney, but his friend. Oh Ooh, yeah, in I the, can't remember in the from friend the friends sketch, one, which yeah. that one is also a little bit weak to me. That maybe oh you don't belong. like that one? Oh, I, I love know. that one, dude. I, I thought that was hilarious. He's like, you look like you need some friends. It's like, how do you have friends? How would you like two hundred friends? <laughs> the the concept is funny, but I don't and know. And he's got but, this huge suit on. Um, I love that it, one, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. I I feel like. There's almost this, like, it, it, at least for me and in my social circles, and I'm just going to really generalize and apply this to all of America, but yeah. I feel like people are kind of burned out on SNL generally, yeah. and it's yeah. just kind of like there, there's an... There's a desire for a different format while still having that sketch comedy. Because, like, sketch comedy, there's no way that's going anywhere. Basically, that's, like, the draw of TikTok is that it's just super short sketch comedy. At least the comedy exactly. side of it, you know? Yeah. And so I feel like I think you should leave just kind of scratches that itch for a lot of audiences. But at the same time, for a lot of performers who are like, I still want to do this, but I just don't really want to do it kind of in that stale same way that it's already been done. And I think you should leave is doing it in a new way that is surprisingly popular with audiences. Yeah. Like and way more so than you would expect. Yeah. Given the type of <laughs> yeah. humor. That it's this. super, it feels super niche, but I think it kind of gives an outlet to a lot of people to like laugh mm. about things that they don't generally think that they would laugh at or like, around their friends they're trying to seem more normal than they actually are than or whatever they actually are deep down whereas you and i we let that shine oh yeah through. we let our freak flags fly <laughs> exactly as they say and that's <laughs> fun to do for us but for some people it's like they like that stuff but they don't let it be projected as much yeah. but they still love the type of yeah. humor that tim robinson kind of taps into i think it's perfect that uh Lonely Island produces this as well because Big time. they started all the SNL digital short stuff, like yeah. digital skit sketches and stuff like that. And so I just think like, I mean, they SNL, started digital I, shorts, I, like digital shorts didn't exist before them. Nope. They were the first ones to do it. Wow. And yeah. It's pretty crazy because they were doing YouTube videos at the same time as being on SNL. And right. they like showed some of the people and they're like, oh yeah, just keep doing this, but throw cast members in and then we'll put them on. And I think that type of sketch comedy works way better than just live sketch comedy. Yeah. Like, I think there's definitely moments where it can be really funny. Mm -hmm. But the, the nice thing with doing digital shorts or just, like, sketches that you can edit and write out more is that it gives you the ability to edit it and add mm -hmm. in special effects or different things that you can't yeah. do when it's live. Make it funny in and different think, ways. Yeah, make it funny in different ways. Exactly. In more ways as well dude and that's a and thing so i think like, it's cool that they work on this i like let's talk about editing a little bit because we've already thrown in some of it like with the piano note for example yeah. in the kids yep. sketch there are so many um like i, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of our editors out there um <laughs> oh, not for this podcast be. but just in the world because yeah, yeah, there yeah. is so much of a creative voice that comes through in editing like, oh, yeah. like in other, like in writing, for example, you hear editor and you just think like, oh, that's just someone that's going through and making sure that the grammar is right. But editors for like TV and film, I feel like a lot of people that aren't like in the industry kind of picture, picture it almost the same way. It's just like, okay, we're taking all this raw footage and we're like just cutting it together so that it works, you know? But editing has so much more than that. It, you can... You can totally, you, you can make or break a scene with just a good or a bad editor, you know, and somebody who can tell why something isn't working and just add in 
a little piano cue that will make the whole thing like imagine that sketch without the piano cue. Yeah. It's like, it's like still funny, like that, but that it just doesn't have it, you know? Scripted. Yeah. Yeah, that's I totally agree. Editing is just something that is so often overlooked or just forgotten because it's yeah. that that's kind of the sign of a good editor though when it just kind of flows mm-hmm. and you, it doesn't take you out of it it's when the editing right. takes you out of it that people are like bah! like bohemian but, rhapsody <laughs> like bohemian rhapsody exactly that, that scene, scene is like dude. really distracting and that movie but won it, best editing yeah which, which is, is you know obscene. further pointing at problems with and i you know I the love, academy but whatever yeah yeah whatever that's a whole other. <laughs> the the thing with editing, like, it, I love, like, a good, like, a Damien Chazelle movie where the editing is very, like, poignant and it's just a part of it. But yeah. on the other hand, like, editing sometimes is just something that flow, it makes the movie flow and it just, there's nothing distracting about it. And, yeah. it, like, our brains are just trained to accept movies and TV just as it is because of yeah. how editing is done. And the editing mm-hmm. is just simply... Like well, done and, well most of the time, which is great. It's exactly how it's supposed to be. It's yeah. really when it gets distracting. But like you were saying, this with sketch comedy especially, you know, after editing my thing, not that it like compares, but it's like it's, it's just such a huge part of it of making yeah. it funny and good. And I think that is part of why they take so much time between seasons. Part of it was COVID and everything like that. But part of it is like they really want to write it out because it's like, you know, 30 different sketches and like, individual script that they have to write out for this show and then they have to shoot them all separately and then they have to edit them all like it's a huge undertaking even though it may not seem like that much like that would it's just a lot of time so it's not that crazy to me that it takes them two years to do this stuff because it's at such a high quality that i don't know i just love it yeah so. no totally and i like i don't know there there are some cases where editing is very obvious and it's good but it has to be done very intentionally. For example, Tim and Eric. Going back to yeah. that, there's a Tim Heidecker was on the H3 podcast back when H3 wasn't annoying. Um, I haven't watched him in forever. I don't it, even know. Pretty pretty obnoxious. But um, that sucks. I loved him in high school. Same. But um, he was on the H3 podcast, and he talked about how there are a lot of sketches with Tim and Eric where you can totally tell this when you're watching Tim and Eric, but. Where they basically get in front of a green screen with a general concept Mm -hmm. and they just film like 20 minutes straight of footage of both of them individually just kind of talking about that topic and kind of riffing on each other, but with truly zero script. And then they're just like, all right, we'll go into the editing and we'll crop it together. We'll kind of find what the actual story is and we'll edit it together. And that's like, that is them making the the show show basically saying like in, in most other things, the filming is like, okay, that's the big deal. And now in the editing, we'll kind of solve problems. Whereas Uh with them, they're kind of like, all right, we'll film something and then we'll edit it into something that's actually funny. Yeah. And, and that's kind of, yeah. So editing is just super powerful, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I think stuff like Nathan for you, and like documentary, well, not as much mockumentary, but documentary or like Nathan for you, where it's like kind of a merge like between documentary reality and comedy still. style. Yeah. Reality stuff is like it's 100% made in the edit. And yeah. so people who are like, oh man, you know, Survivor is so fake or whatever, it's like you have to create a story. And yeah. honestly, I would say Survivor, that was a bad example because yeah, I think a lot Survivor of Survivor is, is probably pretty on the genuinely, better end. Yeah. Like it's on the better end. Like I really love Survivor. And a lot the of that drama. The Bachelorette, exactly. A lot of that drama is forced and fake, and like a lot of the TLC shows. But Survivor, I would say, a lot of that drama is like just real. It just happens when you have to live with people on an island for a right. month. Right. And so they just, but they still have to comb over the footage and find the little bits where it's like, okay, we know this person at the end of this episode gets cut, so let's find out how they get voted off and like really focus on emphasizing that stuff. It yeah. still takes forever. But I with the we haven't talked about the haunted house one the one with Tim Heidecker in this season, where oh, I, yeah, the dude. the line where he's just like you know I actually want to go to haunted house more than Club Aqua <laughs> yeah and then he just <laughs> latches on to that. that he's like hey can you get into Club Haunted House and he's like yeah <laughs> and he's like oh nice I actually want to go to haunted house more than Aqua 
And he just keeps repeating that. It's just so funny. And he's like, how do you get in there? He's like, I built the deck at Club Aqua. And then it comes around full circle at the end of the episode. Where it's, it's so like, good. The, the deck collapsed at Club Aqua. Well, and then... <laughs> Kardashian's <laughs> head fell off. Yeah, that, that joke I wanted to talk like, about. What the heck is that Because joke? that joke truly felt like almost... <laughs> I don't know. It felt so uncharacteristic of the show, but they in really such a, like in such a positive shout out way. Like celebrities yeah, they never like they like... they never really make it feel like it's part of the real, the real world. like <laughs> the real pop culture world at least, you yeah. know. And so when they throw in Kim Kardashian's head fell off and then the sketch immediately ends, <laughs> that is just like had that been anywhere else in the sketch, I would have been like dumb joke, no. bad, yeah. but yeah. Just cutting the sketch with that, so funny. <laughs> they also have like, another celebrity reference in this one where when he goes to get his hair cut and he has the Brian Cranston, he's oh, like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. get the Cranston. And it's just Brian Cranston thrown away like a bag of popcorn <laughs> like, or something. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, they, they did a good job with this one of making it feel new while also still having the, the same, same kind of charm. And tone. Yeah, I absolutely. still, like... I stand by my statements from the beginning that it's just oh, a stinkers? little, yeah, it's just, I don't know, dude. The thing with this show is the, the more you sit with it, the better it gets. That's like true because I, I remember time. feeling this way with season two. Yeah. I watched yeah. season two and I was like weak. And yeah. now season two is like, it truly contains some of my favorite ones. And I'm like, no, season two is just as good, if not better than the first season, you know, <laughs> you just got to let it sit with you. Yeah. And I think the thing, like, my very first time I watched this show, I was like, oh, this is fine. But then I was kind of thinking about it, and I was like, hmm. That was actually, like, pretty funny. And yeah. then when I actually went back and watched the whole first season, because the second season wasn't out yet, I was like, this show rules. This is yeah. such a good show. And then season two, you know, comes out, and then the more you sit with it, the more you rewatch it, the more you see it, the more you learn the quotes and integrate them into your life. Right. It's like, you know what? This season rules as well. Yeah. And I think that's the... I, I immediately loved season three. Um, and so I'm yeah. fully in on it. And I'm excited for the future of this show as well. It was funny too because I was working as a PA on a Jeep set like right after this came out. and No big deal. No big deal. So, yeah, whatever. And so I... <laughs> it has nothing to do with this um, in terms of actually working on this show, which would sure. be my dream. I would love to work on that. that but so cool. I started talking... I said like something like I don't even want to be around anymore, and then this other PA we just started talking about season three, and then this other guy came up and started talking about season three, and then this other guy just was like fifty five burger, fifty five fries. He like wasn't <laughs> even nearby, and he just starts saying that because he heard we were talking about season three. It was Ugh. so funny, like all these people just around us. I was like, this is so awesome that all these people like yeah. working on this thing are into. Uh, I, I think you should leave as well. It was really really fun. I had a situation like that. Um, I was playing a concert in Rexburg, Idaho, and nice. a member of one of the other bands, shout out Pale Dream, um, was yeah, wearing sure. a hat that just had three red cars on it, and under it, it was an embroidered hat. Like it was, it was a nice hat. It was, and nice, under yeah. the cars, it said "Triples is best." And I was like, <laughs> dude. That is the coolest hat. And he's like, you know, I think you should leave. And his whole band all turned towards me. And they were like, you guys know, I think you should leave. And we started talking about it. And it's like, <laughs> That's awesome. this this show really does kind of just immediately forge a community. <laughs> like, if you know oh, people really that know does. the show, oh, it's it, just immediately. It will, it will truly, within seconds, improve my perception of a person if Seriously, they know this it's like, show. The, like we were talking about, like the, the type of humor is weird enough and just inaccessible enough to like, if someone is into it, like really into it, you know, you're going to be friends or yeah. get along at least, at least have a really fun and engaging conversation for that few minutes. Yeah. You know, you have enough in common because likely your sense of humor will expand beyond just, I yeah. think you should leave. So it's like, yeah, it's just such a good way to connect with people. Like truly. Um, um I have a final question before we wrap it. up. Um, so at first when this season came out, one of the reasons that I was a little bit, uh, bummed about it was because I felt like there weren't as many quotes that I was going to work into my everyday speech. Oh, really? And, Dude, there but were a few since, I was like, since then, this yeah, is a, this is yeah, a... 
since then I've already found that there are a couple that have totally found their way <laughs> into my everyday speech. I am speech. well within my right to kill you right now. <laughs> is oh, one that I was like, Man, I hate that, that one. Be... That's too, that's <laughs> like, know. people are too like that, you know? I know. But, um, what, yeah, what are some of the quotes that you think are going to work into your, like, just speaking just to other people? day vernacular, yeah. Um, the one I've mentioned a couple times is the don't say anything he says is interesting or good is good just one. so it's hilarious. very good. Um, the one from I talk about my kids where he's like, what about this? Is this something? As he's humping the wall <laughs> is a great one. Um, I like is the fur something? is his hair. I think that one's just hilarious. Or the, where he's, uh, they're talking about jelly toys. He's like, don't tell them what we're talking about. They're just like, what are you talking about? Like sex. <laughs> just like, yeah. He just doesn't want him to know it's about um, Jill Utah. The the one that really has made it into my everyday speech is um this or a variation of this, but the lines from the driving crooner where he says either there are people that hate this <laughs> or there are people that want to kill me. Kill me. <laughs> and yeah. I've started those are, saying those so much. There are people that want to kill me. Um, oh, I love that. The, I the also have. Presence. What? Uh, it's just the yeah. frat presence in this. I'm going to kill poignant. you, driving crooner. Driving crooner. <laughs> that also has actually made it in. I've said that with my friends a couple of times. So I'm going to kill you. But um, also. Oh, what was the other one? There, there was another great one. A piece of That's, paper fell out of your headphones. No, it was, uh, I was holding something and it, I dropped it because I'm dumb. <laughs> um, oh, I, I had another well, one. While I you're thinking of that, something with the embroidered hat that I, that made me uh, think of something. So with the Dave Filoni, who's a guy who's big in Star Wars stuff. He yeah, works on Mandalorian and works on Clone cowboy Wars. cowboy hats. He's got the cowboy hat. They're cool. Um, mm-hmm. But he... There was like a behind the scenes documentary they made for the Mandalorian season one, and he had this jacket, like this leather jacket with mm-hmm. this huge embroidery on the back that says "We're Wolves," like from oh, I, that's what we do in sweet. the shadows. And it's like that is not a manufactured no, item; like, like he, he made that custom. or had it made for <laughs> yeah. himself. And he's wearing it pretty much the whole time. Like he's just yeah. always wearing this huge jacket that has this huge like cartoon werewolf on it that says "We're yeah. Wolves" on it. Which I just think is hilarious when people just make stuff like that because they love it and it's just, they want it to be like really nice and hyper specific. Yeah. I I just love that idea. Um, I, I thought of what the other quote was. It's from Summer Lovin', but the, honestly, most of the stuff from Summer Lovin', I've, I, with, with friends, I've worked in the good a lot of times, (laughs) just the quick good and then drinking the water right after. But the the one is crying while saying, I don't know. <laughs> but just like the really sad, I don't really know. something really bad for me waiting Yeah, and honestly, something really know. bad waiting for me at home, I've said a couple of times, just like when I've mentioned like hanging out with friends or something, it's like, all right, I'm going home, but I don't really want to. <laughs> There's something really bad waiting for me at home. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. it's a great line so i don't know i just i i'm the rat mom i think would be really funny to i'm say. yeah i'm sure that'll make it into yours <laughs> but i, I just want to be the rat mom I just there are other ones that you don't even notice me. there there are other ones that i would love to do if they weren't so specific that you couldn't just use it in speech you for example I don't know. I've never gotten this far before when he's doing the egg <laughs> the game. Egg game. I you just should be able to watch a little porn at work. <laughs> and then the scene ends. Just like, the where did game. that come from? He's like, this isn't porn. This is That's, a nude egg I won from my game. It's not even it's like, like kind of what the sketch is about until the yeah, very end. It's such a left like, turn, dude. <laughs> And he's just so confused. He's like, this isn't porn. He's like, this egg has a bush. I'm like, what? <laughs> the idea that they are in his office just getting angry at him, but also don't notice that he is just furiously <laughs> swiping his mouse across his desk, feeding this thing. It's so stupid. I just love that sketch. It's so uh, funny, dude. All right, we should just wrap like, it up before he, we just get into Would you looping. like to buy 80 eggs? Yes. <laughs> yes. And there's no cost. It's just like, okay, now you have 80 <laughs> just, eggs. Now you have 80 
Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very it, excited to be rewatching this season along with the other ones over the next yeah, couple of years. Big so, time. until we get more, I'm very satiated with what we've been given. So, I'm satiated as well. If you've made it this far and you haven't watched it, we've ruined a lot of it. But go out and watch yeah. it yourself. Look up the quotes, learn them. You won't regret it. Yeah, and uh, um, thank you to Jared for being here. Yeah, Jared, you've been quiet this episode, but we've really appreciated you. Taking time yeah. out of your busy, uh, busy European tour, vacation, summer abroad schedule to be with us and do this stuff. So yeah, the podcast means a lot to me. So I would, I would, uh, I move mountains just to be on here. All Thank right. you, Jared. We Thanks, love dude. You. I appreciate we love it you so much. We really we can't, appreciate. We can't it. wait to see you. If you were to miss way. another episode, we really would have to have a serious conversation about maybe, yeah. you, you know, parting ways uh, with us and, at some uh, point, but. Um, we might have to put you down. Yeah. Also, the the experience of you jousting through me has been kind of shocking. Uh, Shockingly, but, but really great. Exciting. And it's yeah. It's been a bonding experience for sure. So that's uh, really awesome. Yeah. Well, you we'll see you next week. To say? No, I don't right. have anything. No, well, I was talking to Jared. Oh, Jared. Yeah, no. Wasn't I, he? He's anything. kind of jousting through me as well. He's doing that two way thing we were talking about. Oh, interesting. So, in you and so he is. In, uh, yeah, he's. Gotcha. Yeah, but I, I haven't been able to channel his words like speak his voice, for him. Right. But yeah, I've been channeling his speech and his poor eyesight. So it's been a taxing yeah, you got hour. The double down. Yeah. Well, well, cool. We'll end the episode there. We um, certainly will. I've noticed I've started saying bazinga at the end of episodes. Just <laughs> Have you really? Yeah. I'll, I'll be like editing the attention. episode and I'm like, why do I say bazinga? <laughs> like, well, hit us I with a quick it's... bazinga to, to wrap us up. And yeah. we'll see you on another Man Cave yeah, movie night Monday. It's like Jared Monday. or someone will say, we'll see you on another Man Cave movie night Monday. And then I'm just like bazinga. Like I just, <laughs> in the back of my subconscious, I just say it. It's interesting to me and before like, we wrap up. Before we wrap up, it's interesting to me that you say it with kind of the soft G. Because bazinga. normally I've heard it as bazinga, but you say bazinga. <laughs> bazinga, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's just interesting. Yeah. I don't cool. care. I don't care. I don't But it's care not good behavior. At all. Like <laughs> that's at a that's a line all. from season two that I really recently have started doing is the I don't care about it, but it's not good behavior. Oh yeah. From dude, the I tattoos thing from Crashmore. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> I've seen, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've seen everyone naked. It's like, what? Why? To see if they have tattoos or not. If they don't, if they have tattoos, they don't get a gift that year. <laughs> it's just the specificity. Not it's that so year. funny. That, I think that's one of the best, one of the best parts about the show is just the hyper specificity with so yeah. many of the jokes. It's like, I don't, I don't care, care about, about it, it but it's not good behavior. behavior. All right. We will see you guys on another Man Cave Movie Night Monday. And Bazinga. Thank you.